<laughs> it's, you know what's funny about doing this now? Welcome to the penalty box. What's funny about doing this now for us is is now I've got other people on other shows doing it that I'm on. And, then, and I'm doing this, and they're like, why are you doing that? I'm like, because we wait for Wes to end the broadcast. and. I saw I saw you do it on a show the other day with those two other guys, and uh, I think it was Mark and uh, um, Mr. Ginn. Uh, yeah, yeah, they, they yeah. had no they had no idea what you were doing. No, they, they had actually, no idea. And it they was thought you were actually, they thought you were frozen. So yeah, yeah. Hey, welcome back to uh, the show. Excited today. Uh, one of you know we've done this I think what 18, 19 times now, and our views keep going up and up and up. And and I'm really. I don't want to say this is the one I'm the most excited about so far because everybody's special, right? But but Jesse Cole is going to be on today, and we'll bring him on in a few minutes. But um, I kind of, by luck, ran across – I say luck because I'm totally lucky that I know him now, but ran across him by luck where someone happened to like a post of his on LinkedIn, and it right. popped in my timeline. And I'm like, well, who's this dude in all yellow? This looks weird, right? And, and you know, kind of – uh, actually, maybe because you know, with little girls, little kids, I've got kids that watch uh, Curious George, and I thought maybe, well, this is the man in the yellow hat in real life or something, but it's right. not. So, so we'll bring him on in a minute. But cool. uh, excited to have him on, and I know we'll kick this off with our shots on goal. And I, I feel like I should put on my my Woodstock uh, in hat. Uh, but uh, I'll let you. You got a couple more shots on goal today than me. So, what do you got, sir? Yeah, I'll, I'll be. I'll be quick. Uh, the uh, first of all, my 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 first one is a very quick one. Uh, rest in peace, uh, Rush Limbaugh. Uh, excellent in bro excellence in broadcasting. Uh, you know, uh, he, he, whether you like his politics or not, he was uh, he was a uh, trendsetter. And the uh, first shot out to him. Uh, hey, you know, in in the commemoration for our guest and for. Um, uh, pitchers and catchers being uh, uh, coming in. Did you see the two idiots uh, that broke into Fenway Park and ran around in the snow? And then I have not seen the video. I heard about it, but what 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 happened? What happened? Yeah, it was about a month ago. They they broke in and they filmed themselves and 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 they, they you know, there was a guard and they got away from the guard. But then the idiots went on and uh, <clears throat> posted it on TikTok. So uh, uh, they've been found and arrested, uh, as far as I know. So that's my first real shot on goal. And my second is, you know, what you know and what you don't know about Bitcoin. All right. So right. it went over 50,000 this, this, uh, this week. And uh, I'll yes. tell you this, did a little researching, you know, was founded by this guy, uh, last name Nakamoto, and no one really even knows who he is. And, but the first, and I think that you'll like this, the very first um, purchase ever recorded uh, as a purchase with Bitcoin was in 2010. And pizza. it was a, pro a program that bought two – he bought – a programmer bought two uh, two pizzas, right? So yeah. you, know, you do the rough math. Uh, there's 16 slices in these two, right? And based yep. on yesterday's pricing, uh, and it takes about 15 bites they average to uh, to finish a slice of pizza. So yep. yesterday's uh, yesterday's prices, that's uh, $2 million a bite. So uh, – yeah, I saw that as well. Um, someone shared that, and and I saw that. Thought that's pretty, uh, pretty amazing. Kind of, you know, I'm not a Bitcoin guy, so I, I, you know, yeah, whatever. Um, I only have one shot on goal today. Um, the Red Sox traded uh, Ben and and yep. basically our whole starting outfield from World Series team is gone. And I, I just like I want to be. I got you know I love baseball. Right. Sure. I love I love the Red Sox, Patriots, Celtics, Bruins. I love all of them. Uh, but I couldn't get into baseball last year. It just it just felt weird. It felt weird watching it on TV. It just didn't seem right. It just and 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 so hopefully and I don't know what it's going to look like when the season starts back up, if people will be allowed into Fenway or not and what that's all going to look like. And I'm sure um, Jesse can talk about that. Uh, but like this whole this whole team is just so different and, and I didn't watch much last year and and I, I I wonder you know they've talked about how ratings were down across the board in sports over the course of 2020 and I wonder if it's some of it's politically motivated why people aren't watching the NFL or why people aren't watching there and but some of it, I just wonder if it just because it doesn't feel right if that makes sense that right. guys like me have kind of stepped away from it a little bit. Well, you know, uh, it, it, you know, Jesse's experience that he's going to talk about, you know, uh, is what what baseball, the future of baseball is. You know, it's live events. It's an experience. 
you know, sitting in front of a television for four and a half of five hours if it's a Yankees game. Uh, right. it, it, it's ridiculous. You know, it really, it really is. And I don't, I know that Benny Tendi was uh, traded. Where did he end up? I think Kansas city. Okay. Well, I think, I think. Well, Alex Cora was on the radio yesterday saying that, that, you know, it looks good for this year. We're a much more agile and athletic team. So we'll see. We'll see. Yeah. Well, I, I said I had one shot on goal, but I wanted to zing you with one last thing. Uh, oh. re- rest in peace round glasses. <laughs> Uh, thank, 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 thanks, thanks to Mr. Tim. So for everybody that doesn't know, you know, I, I, I love these and I'm going to go buy some more. Uh, but, but Tim, Tim had watched, uh, the church that I go to, Tim had watched the broadcast online and he ordered this faith church hat. And so we're on a zoom call and I'm like, what are you wearing? So I immediately get on, um, uh, uh, Woodstock in and brewery over here which is one of his clients and i get on their website and i order this hat and i'm so excited for it to show up last week well i live in oklahoma we got a nice storm i walk all the way out to the mailbox and i get right to the road and boom, down i went my elbow is still sore my knee is still sore and i hit the side of my head busted my glasses all for this hat Tell them the tell them tell them tell them the uh, the truth behind the hat though. Uh, you know he bought the hat and the logo has been is is being redone yeah. now. So it's, uh, you know. Yeah, and then on top of that, I buy the stinking hat that cost me like thirty two dollars with shipping, and then they're changing the freaking logo. I'm like, <laughs> good lord. Speaking of hats, I'll tell you the Savannah Bananas uh, voted in a new hat, and I'm gonna pick me one up today. Because they are cool. It's got S A V, and maybe Wes can throw that up whenever we get Jesse on here. But do you have one more shot on goal, or are you done? I'm good. All right. Well, without further ado, let's get Jesse Cole up here on the screen with us. <laughs> there, there he is. There. How are you? Fantastic. Excited to be with you guys. Some good shots on goal. That was fun to be a part of it. Or yeah, we, the distance. We, do you have a shot on goal you'd like to kick out? Anything sports wise, business wise, anything on your brain right now that you're just like? Just want to just zing it out there. Five thousand things are always on my brain. So maybe <laughs> a little bit more specific, but uh, no, I'm just excited to fi- uh, talk with you guys. I mean, the reality is, you were talking about Major League Baseball and the challenges. I mean, there's so many challenges right now. Why people aren't paying attention, and I think that's a fun topic to get into. And so I'm just excited to be with you and have some fun. Well, I I, I mentioned uh, before you came on. Um, there we go. So it's which hat? No, Wes is not one of those, is it? That's a lot of hats. Yeah, it's not. It's not one of those, Wes. If you go to their website, you can see the new hat. It says oh, the fan, the fan design hat. Yeah, the yeah. I think that's really cool. I'm gonna order one of those today. <laughs> but I was telling, uh, you know, I kind of, how I came across you was I'm on LinkedIn and someone had liked one of your posts, and then it popped up in my timeline, and I'm like, well, this who's this cat? And I watch, and and one of the things you do that I love is you do these like little one minute boosts, <laughs> right? And it, it and and they're not they're. No, Wes, it's the one down here on the bottom, I think. Anyway, you do these one-minute boosts, and they're awesome. And I would tell anybody to jump on LinkedIn and connect with Jesse, follow Jesse. And 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 the one-minute boosts are really good. And, you know, sometimes I think we overthink motivation or we overthink, you know, and sometimes you talk about just the basic stuff and sometimes we just need a little kick in the butt. And I, I love those one minute boosts. Can you talk about those? Like what thought do you put into, Hey, this is what I'm going to talk about. Do you, <laughs> well, thank you. Know, you. Literally one of the 5,000 things you're just like, let's see. Yeah. Well, motivational speaker was never my goal. I just, you know, thinking about five years ago, my wife and I were sleeping on an airbed. You know, we had to sell our house. We had to empty out our savings account. We were down to our last dollar um, because our team was failing. And I was too afraid to share things back then. I was just trying to survive. And as we were able to get out of that struggle and only selling two tickets and failing miserably, um, we've learned a lot over the last five and 15 years for myself in the industry. And I said, why don't I just share everything? So yeah, I share everything that we're learning in this journey because I think uh, uh, that's the right thing to do. And our whole name of our company is Fans First Entertainment. And I think if we can share more for the fans and uh, keep things out there, that's a win. So I'm going to keep sharing. I don't know exactly what I'm doing all the time, but uh, if I can share and help, that's a win for us. Yeah. How many uh, yellow tuxedos do you have? Way too many. 
Uh, the, <laughs> the, the, the reality is uh, I have seven of these. I actually proposed to my wife in a yellow tuxedo in front of a sold out crowd. Uh, I actually stopped the game in the middle of a game uh, and had a huge fireworks show. The umpire and the coaches were like, when are we going to play? I'm like, this is our moment. And thank goodness right. uh, she said yes. And uh, we're still married. We have a new banana baby. And uh, she actually, ironically, when I proposed, she surprised me with a trip to Savannah. And that's where we went to that stadium and fell in love with that market and, and decided to go to Savannah. So it all really came full circle. But yeah, I wear these all the time. It's my uniform. When I put it on, it's showtime. And it's yeah. weird. It's crazy. But uh, one of my biggest mentors is P.T. Barnum, who I'm looking at right now in my office. And uh, so I take a lot of inspiration from him. Well, you know, you, you mentioned your wife, and I, I've seen a picture of you and her together. And this is the equivalent of like your like single A ball, and she's a big leaguer. Like <laughs> your league, dude. Like, I don't even know how you did that. That that you have to be a showman, right? Uh, I think yeah, that was my biggest success by far was her. But I, I, I'll tell you, it's funny. She actually joined us as our director of fun back in 2012 with our first team, our Gastonia Grizzlies. And she yeah. was the only girl that would ever get in a hot dog costume and not worry about her hair, not worry about how she looked. I was like, this girl's got more confidence than anyone I've ever seen. She's right, right. for me. And, uh, been very That's marriage material for sure. That, yeah. Anyone that'll get in a hot dog costume, wear it every day in the, in the heat, you know, that's a winner. Right. Hey, uh, I wanted to oh, – go ahead, Tim. Uh, uh, Jesse, I, I, have a, I have a small little ad agency, and I've done a lot of work with minor league baseball over the years. Uh, there was an Atlantic League up here in New England uh, for a while. The National Pride yeah. uh, was uh, Eastern League champions. Uh, uh, you know, uh, down in Brockton, Massachusetts, yeah. a client yeah. of ours is the Rocks. Um, so, you know, I know this from not only working with them since like 1997 in all of these different leagues, um, that ad sales were king inside the program, on the scorecard, on the outfield, uh, you know. And uh, here we go, Jesse. Here we right, go. So I, I want to tee this up for you. You know, I know that some of the friends of mine that are in the baseball industry that own teams uh, are uh, like uh, rolling their graves of, of uh, their checkbooks. Tell me why and how you came up, up upon that. You think he was stretching there. <laughs> oh, here, we go. here we go. Let's get rolling now. Uh, well, it's ironic that you mentioned that. You know, some of those teams you mentioned no longer exist. The Brockton Rocks, they no longer have a professional team. A lot of those have gone out of business. And the reality is the Savannah Bananas should not exist. There's no reason we should have a team. When we announced our team name, people were like, the owner should be thrown out of town. You guys are an embarrassment to this city. You'll never sell a ticket. But the reality is the name of our company is Fans First Entertainment. At first, seven, eight years ago, we called it Team Colon Associates. It was like a terrible law firm or accounting <laughs> office. That was not what we were about. And when we made that decision that we were going to be Fans First, we said, all right, what is the best all-in Fans First experience? And we said, it's not about our short-term profits, it's about long-term fans. And so the first thing we realized is baseball is long, slow, and boring to too many people. I appreciate you guys as baseball fans, but the reality it is too long, too slow, too boring. So yeah. we started to say, what would it be if it was nonstop entertainment? And I'm not talking about a typical minor league team that does a dizzy bat race and a run the bases. I'm talking about nonstop. And so what can we do? So we said, could our players do choreographed dances every game? And that's what happens. Could we have a break dancing first base coach? Could we have a 20 piece pep band? Could we have a banana nanas senior citizen dance team? Could we have a male cheerleading team called the Mananas? We kept going down that right. So we thought, <laughs> all right, that's fans first, nonstop entertainment. We started getting people talking. Then we kept going down. We said, all right, you know what? When you pull money out of your pocket in the, at the ballpark, that's not a fans first experience. You want a hot dog at $4. You want this, it's $5. We said, that's not fans first. We said, well, what if every single ticket was all inclusive? So now at a ballpark, every burger, hot dog, chicken sandwich, soda, water, popcorn, dessert, everything, and your ticket, $18 all in, includes it all. We said, let's wow. do that. And then we said, we kept going, well, why is it $20 shirt, $27 when you pay shipping? Why shouldn't it just all? So we did free shipping. Why are there ticket fees? Why are there convenient fees? So we limited all of that. And then finally, two years ago, we said, no one comes to the ballpark to be advertised to. No one comes to the ballpark to be sold to. And no one comes to the ballpark to be marketed to. They want to be able to just have fun. Why are we advertising to them? That's not a fan's first experience. I'll tell you guys, going on YouTube versus going on Netflix, I will choose Netflix 10 million times over YouTube because skip ad, skip ad, skip ad. So yeah. why are we doing that? So we looked at it and said, all right, let's 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 do it. And so on February 25th, 2020, uh, literally two yeah. weeks before the pandemic, we said, what if we threw away hundreds of thousands of dollars before a pandemic? And that's what we did. We, <laughs> we made our whole ballpark ad-free. And uh, and we haven't looked back one second since then. And there was actually a story, a count that came out, a story that came out, Baseball Prospectus. We may have been the only baseball team in the country that was profitable this past year. 
We found a way to be profitable with a very small social distance crowd and with no uh, advertising in our ballpark. And what's happened is our merchandise has gone through the roof. People are supporting the team. They're finding ways because they believe in who we are and what we stand for, not trying to just get money. And I think that's the challenge with Major League Baseball and a lot of corporate entities. It's money, 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 not fans, 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 fans. And we will always go on the side of the fans. Good for you. That's amazing. Just keep going. I, you know, we just, he's wound up. <laughs> you got me going on that stuff. I, I, because I, it's different and I don't expect everyone to do it, but we yeah. believe in it. Right. We and, while, it. and while you were talking about it, I'm thinking when I buy a ticket to go see a, a Broadway show for 40 something dollars, they're not, they're not advertising to me, but they're not throwing in a drink. And, you know, so why wouldn't yours, yours be an all inclusive show experience? And I love it. I think it's amazing. Well, you learn from well, outside the industry. Like the cruise industry, we learned a lot from the cruise industry. You get all your food, all your entertainment included. Why don't we do that? And what's funny, guys, is people spend more per cap in our stadium than any other stadium in the ball in the, in the, in the league. It's not even close because they feel like they feel like they're taking advantage of us, getting all their right, food. Right. I got to buy some merchandise. I got to buy a beer. I got to buy a slippery banana or a banana blackout or all these other banana concoctions we're working on. But you know, <laughs> that, that's what they think. Well, I, I wanted to ask because I did write down. I wanted to ask you about about ticket pricing. So it's eighteen bucks. Is that for any seat in Grayson Stadium? Are they all the same price? Or are they different levels? Yeah, I mean, we uh, they're every ticket except we have a few private decks and we have uh, one. Gotcha. Club. But everything else, so, every single ticket, you can't get into our ballpark without having all your burgers, hot dogs, chicken sandwiches, soda, water, popcorn included. You can't so get eight, all right. So eighteen bucks, I get all that. Like I can get, I can go get ten popcorns if I want. And we don't shut it down. If you walk in at 5.30 or you leave at 10 o'clock, it's not like, oh, it's only for a two-hour window. Like, no. Right. Let them have as much as they want. Let people take advantage of you. It's right, different. Right, right. But, but beer beer is extra. Yeah, we can't we can't give away free beer. There, there's, right. some, uh, there's some violations on the law there. <laughs> right, 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 right. Great. I, I did a little, a little bit of research. Grayson Stadium, I guess, was built in 1926, maybe tore down by a hurricane, somewhat rebuilt in 1941. What – is there anything you want to do to the stadium in the future to make it be bigger, better, um, better for fans? But what do you want to do to the stadium moving forward? Well, that's the right question. The, the, the right, yes. The question is, what's the future fan experience? What are fans looking for in the future? Is baseball sports going to be a continued spectator sport or will it be different? When you go to Disney, you control your own experience. So we asked the question, what are the biggest customer pain points? What are our biggest fan pain, pain points? So lines, you can't find seating. Uh, there's not as much freedom. There's different opportunities that we ask. So when you ask what if, we're asking what if. So the future of the stadium, yeah, you better believe. I mean, I have renderings right now that have a zip line going across the field, the Bananas Brewery, <laughs> a speakeasy, <laughs> our three houses for the Airbnbs, uh, seating on the field, um, uh, an actual train going around the entire ballpark. There's a lot of things that are crazy. I don't know if any or what of those will happen. But the key is to reimagine and invent on behalf of your fans. This is yeah. what Amazon's done really well, and this is what Disney always does. They invent based on what that future fan experience is. And those are the questions we're asking. But you're right. It's an old ballpark. No digital scoreboard. I mean, our bathrooms, when we first got there, there were troughs, guys. You know, like the horse trough that you pee in. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so now our bathrooms aren't that great. But I'll tell you, in each men, men's urinal, we have a, a making bacon, our rival team. We have their urinal cake. So our fans are pissing on our rival every night. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> Love it. Love it. Um, I'm, I'm sure you're a Bill Vec guy. 100%. Right. And my uh, yeah. how, how do you think I, I look at like from a sales standpoint, a guy like Zig Ziglar, as an example, right, who was cutting edge and was somewhat yeah, been cutting edge in, in the sales world back in the day. And I wonder what he would do with social media now. It, so if Bill Vec was around now or social media was around then, how do you what do you think he would would he be like, holy crap, we can reach people on a totally different level than he never could. Oh, 1,000%. He would go to where the fans are. So, for instance, I try to ask those questions. What would P.T. Barnum do? What would Walt Disney would do? What would Bill Beck do? I mean, Beck was the guy who literally would sit with the fans all throughout the game. He would have drinks. He would eat with the fans. He would go vecking, you know, literally in the middle of the night drinking with fans. I mean, he was all about the fans. I've got a lot of inspiration. We go undercover every single night. One person yeah. or two people on our staff. I take off the yellow tuxedo. I park with the fans. I come in with the fans. I eat with the fans. When I did it two years ago, my car bottomed out as I went into the parking lot. And then I saw our parking penguins literally eating burgers without not parking people. I was like, this is a disaster. So you learn by seeing these experiences. And so uh, I think Beck would completely embrace where the fans are going. So to, to be more specific, 
you know, one thing we are so focused on, um, we're fo focused on more, not who are you not, for? like, I think every company needs to ask and every sports team, who are you not for? Who are we yeah. not for? We're not for baseball traditionalists. That might be a little different than Bill Vec. The average baseball fan is creeping into the 60s. All right. Baseball tennis is on a st steady decline. All right. Yeah. <laughs> we are so focused on the young audience. It's scary. We, yeah. about a year ago, less than a year ago, we said we're going to go on TikTok and just start showing all of our players dancing, all of the fun things that we do, like all the crazy, you know, shenanigans. And we what, relied heavy on that. Now we have more followers on TikTok than any major league baseball team. We're about to hit 400,000 followers because we're focusing on that young audience. That's who our future fan is. And so that's yeah. why we, that's why we play an, a new two hour baseball game that's action packed and fast because a longer game is not where the game is going. It's not where people want to go. No one, no one, I mean, have you ever guys gone to a great movie or a great show or a great event in the middle of it? You're like, oh, that was fun. Let's leave now in the middle of it. <laughs> right, right, yeah, <laughs> good point. In baseball, it happens every time. We, we, yeah. we were so fortunate. Went from selling two tickets in the first three months and being on an airbed and struggling to now selling out every single game with a wait list of tickets in thousands. People still leave. We might have half the crowd at the end of a game. That's a problem. Wow. Watch what your fans are doing. Don't just think, yeah. how can you make money? So that'll actually lessen the amount of money we have because we'd shorten the game with less opportunities for extra concessions or extra merchandise. But it's a better experience, so they'll want to keep coming back. That's the game we're trying to play. I think Bill Beck would be doing the exact same thing. Yeah. Well, I, one of the things I talk a lot about from a social media standpoint, and we talk a lot about social selling, and and I'm in the pizza industry, and you see pizza operators that pizza, 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 pizza. It's just everything is a picture of a pizza. But I want to I want to pop the hood. I want to pop the box, and I want to see. I want show your staff. You do a great job of showing your team. I want to I want to know. I want to know what the stadium looks like before I ever even walk in. Mm -hmm. I, I want to have just let me feel it and see it and be part of it all, not just a picture of a baseball player, a picture of a baseball player, a picture of a baseball player. Like, that's boring. That's that that's taking that's taking social media and applying what we would have put in the of the back cover of a magazine and just going pizza, pizza, pizza. It's boring. And, and you do a great job with it. I I was just more curious, you know, do you is there is there strate strategic meetings around? Is do you have like a calendar laid out of what you plan on doing for social media posts? Oh, five thousand percent. Yeah, I mean we're so we bring everyone in through interns and they learn our culture and and we we've learned things. I mean we've struggled with so much, but we learn like player music videos work when we put the players doing "Can't Stop the Peeling" or "Old Town Road." When you get the players doing Sandlot parodies and Major League parodies, it works. Utilize people in a different way. And so the question, even in pizza. You know, everyone's like, oh, we got pizza. We got pizza. What makes you different? And, yeah. and they all have a better price. Come on, really. What makes you different? And so we're yeah. about to actually, I, I, I realize we've dropped the boat on this. We don't even have this on our website. People talk about it. But I actually wrote up for our team. I, I wrote, guys, what are all the things that make us different? What are we the only one doing? And so I was literally like, we sell only one ticket. It's all you can eat. Our players dance every night. It could be Thriller, Footloose. Our coaches dance. Well, our breakdancing dance coach. Uh, we have our own beer, Savannah Banana Beer. We have our own cream soda, Savannah Banana Cream Soda. We have our own specialty alcohol drink, the Slow Beer Banana. You know, we're the only baseball team to have a senior citizen dance team, the Banana Nanas. Our ballpark's ad-free. You know, we have zero ticket fees, added fees. We play Banana Ball, the world's fastest and most entertaining game for select games. We celebrate banana babies before the game. Every night we lift up a baby and sing, Na Savannah, na he. <laughs> a baby. You know, we're the only that's baseball awesome. team to play in kilts. We're actually undefeated playing in kilts. Uh, nice. you know, and so that's just a list of some of the things. And I would challenge every pizza restaurant, whatever you are, what are the things that you're the only one doing? And then yeah. you don't have to invest on the marketing because people will be talking about it. And that's yeah. what we're trying to constantly find. What are we the only ones doing this year and this year and then next year? Yeah. You know, along those lines, well, because it, it, I'm in the pizza space, a lot of these guys get so consumed with, well, what are the national chains doing? What are they doing? And I, we, be unique. Compete be against you. yourself. Compete against yeah, yourself. What, what, what makes you great, right? Yeah. I, I did want to ask you, um, garbage can nachos look insanely good. <laughs> are those good? <laughs> I think um, they're heart-stoppingly delicious. <laughs> is that, so, is that, you know, this is like literally like the, a garbage can lid and a ginormous plate of nachos on top of this thing. I, it's like three orders I of nachos. To... Yeah, it's three orders of nachos, two cheeseburgers cut up, two hot dogs cut up, two chicken sandwiches come up, a half pound of nacho cheese and chili, two bananas. Sometimes we throw donuts on there. It's 3,400 calories, feeds a family of whatever. 
I was literally <laughs> going to ask how many how many calories. What do you what do you charge for that? That's twenty bucks. Wow, that's crazy. That's- so, uh, so Jesse, you and I have a mutual friend on, on LinkedIn. Uh, he is my nephew, Stephen Donlin. Uh, he was in sports marketing uh, down in Florida, and he saw you were coming on, and he said, oh, my God, you're going to love this guy. I sent him a Florida baseball, and apparently some of the people that work in your organization are Georgia uh, uh, people, and apparently didn't take too kindly to it. But he asked me to, to ask you about how did how did you go about offering the president of the United States an internship? <laughs> we still haven't heard back from him. Uh, so, yeah, we uh, when our first year, um, Obama's tenure was done and we thought, you know what, this is a good opportunity. He's looking for a job. You know, would he be interested in an internship with the Savannah Bananas? So we did a whole video uh, tongue in cheek, very similar to the Dollar Shave Club video uh, where and we lit around it and uh, literally sent it. Uh, uh, yeah, we sent it. Grab no, no, we're good. We're good. I'm sorry. We sent it to him and uh, yeah, it, it created a lot of buzz, but it was eight years prior. We sent one to former President Bush with our team in Gastonia and on we didn't hear from him, but on April 1st, we announced that he accepted the job. So people started buying tickets saying we want to meet the former president. We're like, we're going to have a host family. They thought he was coming. So he didn't come, but I, I, halfway through the season, I got a call from his secretary and said, uh, you know, Mr. Bush had received your invitation. He's going to politely decline. He's writing his mouth. I go, he's two weeks late. I want a more explanation. You already missed the boat. The job's not available anymore. So anyway, uh, we do awesome. those things for fun. And I think I think more teams, more companies not, not take themselves too seriously and just have it's, fun. It's funny. I have a friend who uh, worked in uh, baseball in Nashville and then went on to minor league hockey in Las Vegas. And he did a promo night uh, when, uh, when Cheney uh, shot his friend when he was hunting. Uh, <laughs> and he did a uh, hunting vest night. So um, I, I want to know <laughs> – what uh, what what's what's the upcoming uh, promo this year that people must see? <laughs> Good question. So we look we think it differently. We create characters. So for instance, what most teams they'll do they'll bring in. Oh, we got the superstars. We got a new character coming in for one night. We got fireworks. We try to build our own basis of characters. So we're always drumming up ideas. I mean, we had a team luchador, professional wrestler coach last year. We had a grandma coach. Um, We've had DJ Peels on wheels. We have a professional high fiver. We had a wide range of characters we had. Um, We're we're thinking about some things. We're thinking about director of distraction, furious George, a crazy monkey that goes nuts, uh, the belly boys. uh, Explain that. There's a lot of characters that we think about, but, um, the reality, it's not just one night anymore. We used to do pregnant night, a two for one, you and your future kid get a free ticket way back in the day with our former team. Uh, we did flatulence fun night, salute to underwear night, the world's largest tickets. Uh, world, We did everything. We tried. But now it's really like we want to build our own IP. And so when you come to a Bananas game, you will see the pep band, the banana bananas, the man bananas. You'll see all these characters a part of our baseball circus. And so that's yeah. We're always enhancing that. So I will work on a better answer, but we're working on our characters right now. So no, that's, great answer. that's a great answer. It's all, it's all your own. And I, you can appreciate that, you know, <laughs> like that. very nice. That's so, a banana baby before every game. So I'll tell you this guys, we are working right now on uh, the first ever baseball halftime show. So we are going to look at okay. uh, a halftime show. So fans can look forward to it. It might only be, 30 seconds, half a minute, and maybe five minutes. We don't know. We're working on that. We're also, before games, we're going to have weigh-ins between the visiting team and the home team. We'll pick one guy, like a boxing weigh-in. Like, we do a lot of these battles. There's so many cool things to grab from other sports, other industries, and bring them into your own. And so we take a lot of things from weddings. You know, we do a lot of things. Our players go on dates with fans during games. Uh, it's crazy. Our players deliver roses to little girls. Uh, I'm working on porta john races this year, getting two porta johns with wheels. See how that nice. all these ideas. I never know what's going to work, but we try them. Good for you. So, from from the standpoint of like wins and losses, do you eat, obviously it's entertainment, but do, you, do 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 fans care if the team wins or loses? Or there's fun. Yeah. Yes. But yeah. Yes. <laughs> Here, here's 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 what's funny about it. Um, we always focus entertainment, entertainment, entertainment. The name of our company's fans first entertainment. It's very simple that way. Um, so when our fans come to the game, which you know, this last year during COVID, we played so, socially distanced, we had to turn away 50,000 people that bought tickets. A gentleman comes up on the second game of the year with his wife after the game. We're all having our plaza party. There's the band playing, it's fun. He comes up with his three kids and his wife, and he says, 
man, thank you so much. That was a that was a great time. That was that was so much fun. I go, oh, oh well, thank you. He goes, yeah, we just drove forty hours from Utah for this game. We're driving forty hours back tomorrow. Holy I'm shit. Like, 40 hours? I was like, that would have probably 40 minutes for things. What? It's crazy. And, wow. and, and we realized that kept happening over and over again over the last few years. People fly in. They travel in for this one game. They're not coming to see the Bananas win. It's nice. They're coming right. for the show. Experience. And so we, we have to deliver a great show and a great experience. Now, when they win, it's gravy on top. And here's the reality. We've won more games than any team in the league over the last five years, including a championship and got to the playoffs every single year. So – when your players have fun in front of a sold out crowd in a great atmosphere, they play better. And we actually yeah. had a Georgia Southern professor do a study on this and he studied all the offensive statistics. And he said, there's only one team you play better because of this correlation. And that's the Savannah Bananas. So we focus on the fun, the entertainment, and then the baseball usually takes care of itself. Well, it kind of leads in. So the league that you're in are the other teams are not doing what you're doing. Do players from the other teams come in and, and they're like, this is a spectacle, and I don't even want to. This is a joke, and let's play. Do, what? What? What is the? Like, what do the other teams look at you and think about what's going on in your stadium? At first, I think they all hated us. <laughs> right, uh, right. Because it's. I mean, literally, when we announce the visiting team, we have a, a grim reaper walking on their dugout playing the Undertaker theme song, and and we taunt them. I mean, it's it's bad, uh, and we actually in a fun way. And, right, right, right. But. We pick one player on each on the visiting team, and he becomes the donut hitter. And if he strikes out, everyone in the stadium wins free donuts. So every <laughs> so every time he comes up, the whole stadium, four thousand people are going donut, donut. <laughs> and so it's a point where they get upset. But now the guy tips his hat to everybody after he strikes out because he always always strikes out to try to hit when people are chanting donut at you is not right. an easy thing to do. Uh, right. So, what they realize is part of the fun. And then I've talked to so many guys now recently, like they go back to their ballpark, play in front of 300 people and they come here and it's 4,000 people and it's electric. And yeah. they, our guys are treated like celebrities. Our players said when they go out for food, they very rarely have to buy because they're treated like, you know, all this. So now right. we get the guys that want to be a part of it and want to play. We have a thousand players that apply or reach out for every year for a team of 30 players. So it's pretty crazy. Wow. wow. I, last question for you, for me, before we get out of here and then we'll come back and record the OT. Yeah. Um, what, what are you insecure about? <laughs> a lot. <laughs> I'm dressing in a yellow tuxedo. You'd think I'm not insecure. No, it's a good It's a good question. I think we all have a, a little fear. And I think for me, I mean, it goes back to my childhood. I, my, my parents were divorced when I was a little kid. And uh, uh, my mother had a drug problem. And it was just my dad who took care of me. And I was always trying to make him proud and try to fight for that love. And even today, you know, I still, when I'm out dancing with the fans and having fun, I'm fighting for that love and trying to create something special. So I think... Uh, we all probably care, uh, and I probably care a little bit too much what people think, even though I try to just have fun and not worry about that. So that's a fear. But I would say uh, the biggest, uh, you know, fear from a business standpoint is just uh, irrelevance, not being, not making an impact, not making a difference. And so I'm uh, constantly pushing the envelope, trying to make sure that we can be there to take care of our people, you know, our full time staff, our 200 plus people that work for us, and take care of our fans. And so I want to make sure that we keep pushing that envelope and uh, don't lose that that special thing that we built. Insecurity is a great motivator. <laughs> you know, yeah. And so, so I'm, I'm always curious. So that that's a great answer. I, I love it. So, Tim, you got anything else for Jesse before we before we end yeah, this? And uh, last last question. Uh, you know, I love fans first because in business, it's it's in my business anyway. It's it's, it's customer first. Uh, yeah. But um, are, are you a baseball fan? Are you a, a, a are you a more of a, a fan of the uh, of the show? Good question. Um, I played baseball my whole life. College scholarship, everything. I'm a big big baseball fan. Playing the game. I'm not, I became not a fan of watching the game. And so now, just like some of the greatest innovators, Walt Disney, George Lucas, they all want to create something that they'd like, create something that they'd want to be a part of that would not make them bored. So now I'm trying to create a game that I would love that hopefully millions of other people would love as well. So I am trying to develop more baseball fans every day. Well That's done. Cool. Well, done. well, we're going to get out of here. Uh, who's our guest for next week, Tim? Who is it? Uh, he is an up-and-coming TikTok motivational star his name is joe attain uh he has started this uh, movement called uh, help inspire and i think we're really going to enjoy getting to know him that's exciting cool well we will get out of here we're gonna we're gonna get jesse back on for a few few more minutes and talk a little more baseball and and maybe some other stuff um but other than that let's get out of here and you know Je jesse we this is how we do it we wait for for west and the broadcast so 
you have to put your hand. Come on, Jesse. 